TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. What time is it? It's 9.15 a.m. in Chicago. And, and, and I just want to continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. So just remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. Mark Chopper Reed's final interview. Um, every confession. 60 minutes of Australia, but this is only 30 minutes and 38 seconds. I'm going to let y'all know, if Renee's not in this, it's just not going to hit the same. No flinch Renee. Russian roulette Renee. Look at Let's get into it. Hey, now, people just not be. I speak to you. The, 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 um, Stanley by the... Mark Chopper Reed dished out and survived a lot of violence in his life. Pulled hole back there. His body is like a roadmap to hell and back. But suffering stage four liver cancer, he knows he's on a one-way journey. Did you see that on yeah. the camera? That's the tumour. Look at that. That's Dang. a pretty big tumour, isn't it? Yeah, that's a big tumour. Look at the size of the bastard. Oh, is that one thing you are frightened of? Well, I don't like the look of it. <laughs> <coughs> I don't like the look of it. It's growing in me guts. So I don't like the look of it. <laughs> you got like a yellow Q to him too. Definitely some cancer. It's emotionally, how are you cancer. coping with the thought of dying? Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't even hit me emotionally. It hasn't even. I don't even. You know, I haven't thought of dying. I don't think of um, lying in the grave and you know. What's going on here? You know, I can't. I don't. I'd like. Yeah, I'd like to come back and see what all the fuss is going to be after I'm dead. Oh. Read a few of the papers and watch a few of the TV shows and listen to a few of the de arty farty debates. Watch my reaction. You know, that are going to be on after I'm dead. Was he or wasn't he a good writer? Was he or wasn't he a good artist? Was he or wasn't he a good singer? <laughs> Do you think there'll be a debate about whether you were a good or bad man? Oh, yeah, it'll be, be, be a debate about that, yeah. <laughs> Is that debatable? Oh, I suppose it's debatable, yeah. Where's Renee? There could be no more oh. fitting place than Melbourne's Pentridge Prison for Chopper Reed's final interview. Now closed, Chopper spent nearly 20 years <coughs> of his life inside these penitentiary walls. So, weeks from death, it was here he decided to finally come clean on a crime he has never been convicted of, murder. Tonight, he's admitting to four homicides. Is that a noose? Oh. Well, are you prepared to tell the truth today? Yeah, of course I am. Why is that? Because that's what it's all about. This is the last interview. The last picture show. Does your word mean anything? Don't question me about my bloody well word. That's all I'm saying to you. That's it. Four is all you're getting, and that four, that's, that's it. Four, that's it. That's it. I haven't killed any more than that. And don't try to tell me, don't try to make out that I have. I guess the point is, uh, you have said in the past, you put a television camera in the room and you lay your head off. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course I Yeah, <laughs> right. But I'm, uh, I'm telling the truth now. <laughs> yeah, he's about to, he about to RIP, he might as well. So, Mark, what happened? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Desmond Castillo, 1971, okay. So, Mark, what happened to Desi Costello? Well, well Desi Costello was standing here. He was here. Yeah. My boy, Mark, always hands on with the interviewer. Let's get it. And, uh, yeah, you, you know, you're a fucking imbecile, Des, you know. You, fuck, you, you, you gotta get it, you know. Fuck. You're a fucking imbecile. Fucking whack, bang. Outside sure, the Leinster Arms Hotel in Collingwood, yeah. Chopper is taking me through this bizarre reenactment of a murder 42 years ago. Come on, put your fucking hand up. Right, this one? Yeah, he fucking, and he went like that. Right. It was an organised hit on union heavy Desmond Costello. Chopper Reed was just 17 years of age, and this was his first murder. Oh, he started drilling at 17, Who was this bloke? Painter and Docker. Yeah. What was your involvement in his murder? Trigger man. Oh, just a bloke that killed him. 
Do you even remember why he had to die? No, I can't really tell you why. I've got the faintest idea. I'm trying to think of something why. I've got the faintest or remotest idea why. You know, you start to get in the land of, oh, really, I don't really, why? I, I don't know why. Yeah. And I, as I, you see the cancer all over that man. That's tough. Cancer, the number one killer. I sit here now, I couldn't care less. I mean, why? Did why ever matter to you? Why? Had nothing to do with it. Did he see it coming? Well, no, he didn't really see it coming, no. He didn't believe it was going to come, not from me. I was only a young kid, I was only 17 years old. When you were about to shoot him, what did he say? When I pulled the gun out, he said, fuck off. You know? uh, uh, uh. He said, what are you going to do with that? Chopper? I said, um, what do you think? He said, I'm Chopper Reed. What do you think I'm about to do with this? Think. And he said, get fuck, go away. He said, I'll smack you in the mouth. I'll take it off you and jam it up your ass, all this sort of stuff, you know? And so I just shot him. He started to insult me, you know? But you were going to shoot him anyway, weren't well, you? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was, he was getting insulting, you know, saying that I wouldn't shoot him and he'd take the gun off me and stick it up me bum and all this sort of stuff, you know? Yeah, once you get to talking about sticking a gun, sticking a, sticking a, um, um, you know, up somebody, wrecked them, since that's a big thing over there across the sea, uh, across the ocean, that's disrespectful. Ain't nobody want no class go send off, so, you know. Bob's keg cellar became Des Costello's temporary tomb. Yeah, and he's gone. <laughs> uh, when you threw, why are you laughing? <laughs> Down he goes. <laughs> and that's he, it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and you thought he was dead. <laughs> you two, I do not condone this. Chopper is just crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dead as a door now, as far as I was concerned. But he wasn't, was he? Well, right. well the next morning he said, uh, still, still a bit of a, a bit of a cackle. So what did you do then? Step on his fucking throat. We just fucking went do it like that. We just took a bloody, uh, just a bit of a, bit of a, uh, that was all it took. Did you know that you... Just put the cigarette out, huh? Uh. You had that in you? Uh, then? Yeah, of course I did, yeah. Blase and brutal. The 17-year-old chopper and an accomplice carried the body of Desmond Costello a few blocks to dump it here, in the shadow of what locals call the Collingwood Shot Tower. Police found his body, they just never found his murderer. Were you surprised that you got away with it? No. Why? There's no one around. No one, no. <laughs> this is half past five in the bloody, uh, whatever it was, morning on, in 1971 in Collingwood. So you don't think anyone saw you? Well, if they, if they did see us, they, they turned their head quickly and went the other way. I'm Chopper Reed. Of course they didn't see me. Oh boy. So what turned 17-year-old Chopper Reed into a killer, the son of a soldier and a religious mother? As a young boy, he was sexually assaulted, later teased and beaten up at school, spent time in foster care, and was even committed to psychiatric hospitals. God damn, he went through a lot as a kid. What do you reckon has made you who you are, Mark? I don't know. But do you think that anything in your past, uh, you know, the fact that you yourself were attacked as a five-year-old or six-year-old yeah. um, and raped, do you think, you know, the fact that you were in an orphanage for a time, do you think the fact that your dad loved guns and, and you, you know, you described him as mad. Do you think that shaped you? I've never stopped to, um, to analyse the, uh, I've never stopped to analyse it. Um, I've never, I've never drawled it or given it any great thought, what, what makes me tick. It really, it, it amuses me when other people say, oh, I know you, uh, why is that? Oh, I've spent so much time with you. I know you. We don't know what makes anyone tick. You know, we, we, everyone's a mystery to everyone, and everyone is a mystery to themselves. I believe. You know. But the violence, you know, and and what violence? the absolute fascination with guns. Where did well, that what, come what, from? What, what violence? There's no violence in shooting someone. There's no violence. There's no. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. 
That's a good thumbnail. What's up, bro? Blood spurting out all over the kitchen and ah! Yeah, but no, the act is violent, you, though. You've probably stabbed up to a dozen people. You've jumped on people's heads. You've yeah, 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 done... Yeah. I mean, you're violent, Mark. No, I... Oh, God, am I... There's violence, and then there's violence. I mean, there's Only weeks before his oh, death, dear. Chopper still had the energy to theatrically the make his the chilling gun. point. Is that camera following me? <laughs> you put the mouth on the, on the side of the gutter there, and you get them to open their mouth mm. along the edge of the gutter. Oh, mm. snuff the curb, bite the curb. Uh, not to be violent. This is very violent, like, but this, we used to do this in Chicago. Well, not me, precisely. But I've seen this happen to somebody. It's, 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 t it's that's, that's a rough one right here. And you stand back and you go, Kah! smash the back of the head. Ooh, right on the edge of the gutter. Bang, that's violent. That's violent. You start seeing the blood roll out. Oh, that's violent. That's an act of violence. Yeah, that's, 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 that's violent. You're starting on an sure. act of violence there. It's getting towards an act of violence. In my book. Coming up... My enemy didn't even like being in jail. I loved it. Chopper's life on the inside. Got the ear like that and he's gone. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm trying to be gentle, mate. And justice, Chopper style. It was up to me to kill him. That's next on 60 Minutes. In the eyes of the courts, Chopper was a violent criminal. For many admirers, he was much more than that. Larrikin, showman, comedian. And he loved playing to the crowd, by his own admission, embellishing his crimes as part of the Chopper Roadshow. But tonight, he insists he's telling the truth to set the record straight. You're about to hear the details of two more murders he committed, but for which he was never convicted. Okay. As always with Chopper, the language and the subject matter are explicit. Who is she? What is her name? How do you think the other prisoners would see you? They, they, they hate my guts. I'm as pop popular as a pork chop in a synagogue. <laughs> there has never been a crim quite like Chopper Reed. Articulate, charismatic and funny, here was a man only too willing to shine a light on Australia after dark. The criminal world is controlled by blood and guts. It always has been controlled by blood and guts. It always will be controlled by blood and guts. It's hard to believe you've spent something like 23 and a half years in places like this. Seven and a half years in a place like this and five years down at Risen Prison, Tasmania. Bar a few months, this was Chopper's home from his late teens <coughs> to middle age. But you put a bed in here and there's not much uh, room. A bed and a, uh, and a, a, a plastic bucket for a toilet, uh, a plastic bottle full of water and a roll of toilet paper. That's what you got. And, uh, uh, while Chopper was never convicted for murder, he did time for violent crimes, armed robbery, assaults, arson, kidnapping. And on the inside, he was just as violent. As leader of the notorious Overcoat Gang, he declared war on his rival. Oh, I didn't know he was a leader. I didn't know he banged. I, thought this was, I, thought just, I just thought he was crazy. So he, he was the leader of the Overcoat Gang. What a name. Let's, let's, okay. What would motivate you to get involved in that um, gang war? Well, a young chop was smooth. Look at the pork chop sideburns. Boy, well, had a crispy lining with the slight comb over. Okay. I just didn't like the I didn't like the faces of the people of the opposition. They they when I arrived in B Division, they seemed to have everything under control. They were making all the home brews and getting all the dope in and organising everything and running around the place like kingpins. And uh, so I thought I'd um I'd rectify the situation. And we uh, had some homemade axes made up in the engineer shop, and it was me and uh, a couple of other friends. I, I made them wear overcoats, and we wore, we had axes up our sleeves, and we went around and uh, and dealt with the situation. Chopped them down. So you're not going to get me then, Keithy? Uh, you're not worth doing any more time over you, Megan. Oh, Keithy, you get off on self-defence. Is this the movie? All you've got to do is kill me, present me psychiatric records to the court. There's not a jury in the land that will convict you. The gang war was so extreme and Chopper so enigmatic, they made the movie Chopper. He in turn became an international cult hero. 
is part comedian. Beethoven had his critics too, Keith. See if you can name three of them. Part monster. Secret. I'm gonna go watch this. Today, today Chopper's gonna watch. To winning a war is to, is to love something your, your, um, your enemy doesn't like it. My enemy didn't even like being in jail. I loved it. My enemy didn't like being in Haste Division. I loved it. My enemy didn't like um, having to get up every Monday morning and watch, watch for low-flying pocket knives and low-flying hammers and whether they're going to get attacked that day and who they'd have to attack that day to survive. I loved it, right? Did you really love well, it? Well, I loved the, 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 um, the cut and thrust of, um, of uh, all this sort of stuff going on in jail. But it's the cut and thrust he inflicted upon himself that he will be forever remembered. Famously cutting off his ears to get out of maximum security. How much did it hurt? Oh, it hurt like hell. It really bloody hurt. You know, I, I've got a great tolerance to pain. I didn't yell out or anything, but it bloody well hurt. Oh, and Kevin Taylor's got the ear like that and he's gone. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm trying to be gentle, mate. I said, you're an idiot. I said, you don't hack someone's ears off gently. I said, you hack through them, hack through them. Like that. Just get and, it and done. Put some muscle into it, right? And he's going, straight through, right? And he's going, uh, uh, uh. he says, you're not going to bash me later, are you? I said, no, come in, do the other one. I'm going to look at an idiot with one ear, aren't I? But behind Chopper's <laughs> madness, uh, Chopper wanted symmetry for his ears. Hell no, it's Chopper, why you wild? And Merv was always the menace. Inside Pentridge Prison, he was judge, jury, and, and executioner. executioner. Thug him. Reginald Isaacs, 17, 1974. And it was here, Chopper Reed says he committed his second murder in 1974. His victim was pedophile and child killer Reginald Isaacs. Well, me and man Charlie walked into his cell, Charlie fell the I don't condone murder, but into the ground. And I've jumped up on his bunk and tried to and bang jumped on his head from his bunk onto his head. From his bunk onto his head. From his bunk onto his head, right? And then I've gone from the bunk, I slipped in off the head and hit the chest. From the bunk on into the chest. Bang, bang. And uh, he he wasn't he wasn't dead, you know, but he was sort of like, oh, yeah. and um, so I've taken his shoelaces off him, tied his hand, hands behind his back, and, uh, and then I've taken the sheets off him, wrapped the sheets around his neck, lifted him up with Mad Charlie, got the sheets around his neck, and I've tied the sheet up over the, over the top railing of the OBSO gate, pushed him down, and I've gone out of the cell, and I've closed the cell door. There was no one that saw us, we were pretty quick in here. And um, anyway, at seven o'clock that morning, uh, they've opened his cell door and, and found out that he, he committed suicide. The official verdict was suicide, but Chopper claims he got away with murder within these four walls of D Division at Pentridge. Wow. Chop hung somebody. No one ever questioned me for murder over it. No one ever thought it was murder. They ever thought it was suicide. And you almost sound proud of your work on that one. Oh, well, anyone that had killed a child in such a manner didn't deserve to live. But why was it up to you to? Well, well, it, it must have been up to me because um, everyone in the Roman yard shook hands with each other and said the first person that sees this bloke was obliged to kill him. And well, I happened to be the first person to see him, so it was up to me to kill him. That reasoning is solid and sound. Uh, educationally wise, you two, hold on, hold on. Murder number three, Slam Ozerkma, Ozerkma, Ozerkam, aka Sammy the Turk. Okay. St. Kilda, 1987, and in a rare stint out of jail, Chopper commits his third murder, shooting Siam Ozerkam, also known as oh, Sammy Sam. the Turk, outside Bojangles nightclub. Bojangles? Why did you come out? Bojangles is a, a restaurant in the south over here. Pretty good too, I ain't gonna lie. I think it's a chicken restaurant. It's pretty good. 
good. With Sam, the two. Oh, well, he, he told me he told me he was going to sell me a handgun at, at it. The seedy nightclub has long since gone. It's now a health spa. And Chopper says for the first time he is telling the truth of what happened here. I said, well, where is it, mate? And he said, oh, they'll be here in a minute. They'll be here in a minute. I said, who's they? He said, they'll be here in a minute. And uh, I, uh, I turn around, I see nothing behind me. And so I thought, well, they'll be here in a minute, you treacherous bastard, you know? And I said, you brought me out here to kill me, didn't you? And uh, so I shot him. <laughs> As you do. I shot him. And uh, down he went. He laughs, she tries to smile and keep a straight face. This girl. And that was it. Wait, wait, wait. Chopper, you got gun? You got gun, huh? Until now, Chopper has always claimed the shooting was in self defense. Huh? That Sammy the Turk was armed and part of a drug dealing gang that wanted to get rid of Chopper, the standover man. I was taking their money. I was driving the western suburbs crazy. You know? I'm not gonna lie, the movie looks uh, phenomenal. I think when I did the first interview with Renee, we miss you, Renee. Uh, your presence is in my heart. You're you the real gangster. Anyway, uh, I want to see the movie. I'm gonna go watch it today. I think it's on YouTube. No cap. I think it's in. I was standing over body virtually half of them and uh, taking their money. They didn't like it. You know? But on the night he shot him, Sammy the mm -hmm. Turk didn't pull a gun on Chopper. He was unarmed. When I killed Sammy the Turk, that wasn't a self defence. That was outright fucking murder. I'm sorry, it shouldn't be swearing, but that was outright murder. I, I told the, um, the armory squad that night that, that it was self-defence. I said he grabbed the gun out of the front of me pants and I grabbed the shotgun out and click, click, click here and I've gone bang through the head. And I thought to myself, if anyone believes this story, they got, they got, they got rocks in the head. But the jury did yeah, believe Chopper them, and he was acquitted. Everyone. Shout out to the judicial system, man. Swallowed it. I couldn't understand. And next thing you know, the jury would come back and said, not guilty. I was, I, I didn't go, cheer, cheer, I just dumbfounded as the jury walked out. I'm still looking. Do they say not guilty? I couldn't believe it. Not guilty for that. Oh, God almighty. Thank God you can't be tried twice. I just what? feel like Renee would have been laughing with him. You've just heard is Chopper Reed admitting to his third murder, a confession he's never made before and one he's... Why is she walking through? I don't get the I don't get the center photography right now. Why is she walking through a, a, a cemetery? Certainly never been convicted of, but the killing didn't end there, and that brings us to the cold case of Sydney Michael Collins, who's been officially missing since 2002. Here's a bikey boss who had his first run-in with Chopper ten years earlier, when Chopper shot and wounded him. Still to come. What more do you need? Bang, get a bit, get a bit of that into you. <laughs> Killing in cold blood. Why did you murder him? Because he was an absolute turd. Chopper's oh, last astonishing. Yeah. Chopper didn't really need no reason. He's just out here taking, taking, taking souls, huh? Deathbed confession. Soul snatcher. What does it feel like to kill someone? The final chapter, next on 60 Minutes. For most, Chopper Reed was the funny man on the show circuit with a distant, violent past. It was years since he'd been on the inside. Part of his appeal was that this one-time standover man seemed no longer a threat. But the truth is, Chopper remained deadly dangerous. The showman was still a hitman. And tonight, with his trademark confronting words and manner, he confesses to a fourth gruesome murder, his most cold-blooded. <laughs> For Mark, Brandon, Chopper, Reed. For the past 20 years, Chopper Reed has been making a living playing Chopper, enthralling audiences with a mix of dark deeds and black humour. like a thin line, then I sort of spotch a thin line, spotch. That's the way you know you're following the trail of someone's and their leg blown off. 
But as funny as he makes it out to be, as a standover man, kidnapper, and hired gun. So he was an actual comedian. So y'all was really out here la I I'm laughing too, but okay. <laughs> he was feared as one of Australia's most dangerous men, no matter how he fobs it off now. Of course we were kidnapping him and taking their bloody money and, and all, all the rest of it, but bloody, um, basically that was it. We just kidnap him, we take them, bash them and smash them and bash them and smash them and um, <laughs> give them a good eye and a little bit and smash them and... Um, oh my God, I just, like, I just feel... She's looking at this man like, you are really insane. Renee would have had some compassion. Um, well, <laughs> give me a good eye and I'll let him go. This violence that you have in you, yeah. the rage that you have in you. It's not a rage. It's not a rage. Did you did you learn it, or did you were you born with it? Do you reckon? Uh, good question. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I. Uh, what does your family think of your line of work? I think he acquired it. My father was... <laughs> he was tickled pink. He, <laughs> he'd roll around the floor right laughing. And uh, my mother was uh, horrified into, into absolute um, denial. She just used to uh, um, say that she was no, rel no, rel no relative of mine. She thought you were mad, didn't she? Yeah, she always believed me to be insane, you know. Yeah. I'm a very, very good shot. Here we go. It's that classic thing right here. Would you, like, would you like me to show you how good a shot I am? Yeah. All right, well, I'll get my young assistant, Trent. Grab that bottle. Get over there. Mad. All right, well, I'll get my young assistant, Trent. Grab that bottle. This, this right here is the OG of it all. Right here. Here go Renee. I knew they couldn't let the, the, the solo 60 minute interview go past it. Get over there. Mad, bad, definitely a loose cannon. Yep, I'm a crack shot. When he filmed this extraordinary scene back in 1992, Chopper was only months away from going back to prison. This time, for shooting bikey boss Sid Collins. She hating on Renee, they didn't show her. Because he was the national president of Outlaw Muzzle Club, I was supposed to donate $8,000 to his bloody wedding. So all the people that were coming to the wedding, the, the main people, had to bring eight grand. I'm not giving him eight grand for his bloody wedding. I don't even know how to ride a motorbike. You know, uh, anyway, what all these bloody bikies want me to invite me to their bloody weddings for? And you've got to bring bloody large amounts of money. <laughs> <laughs> and is that why you shot him? Yes. What more do you need? Bang, get a bit, get a bit of that into you. <laughs> and then you well, had him driven to hospital. Well, <coughs> I said, you want one of the brain? No. And I said, well, you go under the lemon tree or out the, in, into the hospital? Where, where do, you, you, do you tell on people? No. You don't tell on people? You, you stick solid? Yes. You won't go give me up? No. All right, good. So we can take you to hospital and you remain silent? Yes. Word on that? Yes. I believe you. Radio team. This man shot him because he didn't want to give him an $8,000 wedding gift. Just decline the wedding. Just don't go, child. Possible. Listen up. We are... <coughs> Top way of thinking was just out the box. <laughs> but Sid Collins broke this baffling criminal code by going to police. Chopper spent the next six years here at Risdon Prison. You can't go dobbing people in. You can't go giving people up just for a minor shooting. Shot him in the guts and took him to hospital. It was a petty offence. After his release from prison in 1998, Chopper said he was never going back. His years of crime were over. But what nobody knew was he would never forget being crossed by Sid Collins. 2002, OK. And so then, 10 years later... Yeah. About you, 10 years later, yeah. You track him down in Casino. No, 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 no. We're in Casino, New South Wales, doing a talk night. Talk night, me and Jacko, doing a talk night. 
Who do you think comes up to me after the talk, right, and wants me to sign a piece of memorabilia? Hello? No. No, he did not. Chop. Chop, he sent you to jail for six years. And he came up to to, to, to get you to sign some... Mem Chop, that's, that is disrespectful, like. Oh, hello, Chopper. You sign this? I can't believe it. What, what are you doing here? Oh, bygones are bygones? Are you sign this? No. I'm not signing anything with you. I'm not signing anything. Uh, I can't even believe oh, I can't even believe it, you know? And uh, I'll see you backstage. Eh? Come and talk to us backstage. He was there. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't believe it. Signed, <laughs> sealed, and Man, delivered. idiot. Completely insane. Off his head on cocaine. Right. And so what happened then? Oh, I'm not going to tell you what happened then, but we took him... Oh, I've got him in a... I hopped into his car, going back to his place, bang, 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 bang. bang. And uh, I shot him the last time with his gun. I killed him this time with his gun. That's how stupid he is. <laughs> I shot him the first time with his gun. I shot him the second time with his gun. How stupid is this person? This is an idiot, complete idiot. And this time? I'm not gonna lie, I agree with Chop on this one. Dude is dumb as hell. What did you, you invite this man back to your crib? What is wrong with you? Tricked on him. Yeah. Chop a gangster. Were you shooting to kill him? Oh, yeah, this time I was shooting to kill him. Last time he just got up in the guts and a trip to hospital. Very Christian last time. Not this time, <laughs> dang. Why did you murder him? Because he was an absolute turd. So we literally kicked his ass in. Anyway, anyway, it's a comedy evening and I thought that was a funny story. So years after convincing his legion of fans he'd swapped crime for storytelling, Chopper brutally settles a score with an old enemy. What did you do with the body? We stick him in the, we stuck him in a hole and filled the hole in, as Wait. one does. Whereabouts was that? Casino New South Wales. Can you be more specific? Do Casino you New South Wales. I'm not going to go and dig it up for you. That's I it. couldn't dig it up for you myself. I, 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 I would forget. It was bloody somewhere near a fucking... a bloody football oval. Somewhere near a football oval. Yeah? About 50 fucking feet away from a football oval on the, on the other side of a big uh, mound of bloody dirt. That's all I remember. Do you reflect on that at all? I mean, you know, his son told police he was miss missing, reported him missing. There's a family there looking yeah, for, yeah. for a dad who's, who's no longer around. Yeah. Any remorse, any sort no, of reflection no, on that? No, 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 none at all. None at all. None at all. Absolutely none at all. These are serious crimes, but the way he is saying it is just hilarious. I, no. you two, I don't condone this. Keep in mind that, please. What does it feel like to kill someone? I didn't feel anything at all. Nothing. Nothing. <sighs> An adrenaline rush? No, didn't feel a thing. No. I didn't get no adrenaline rush, nothing. Fear? No, nothing. No sense of fear. That was so no cold out here. Foreboding or anything like that, nothing. What about his day? Sense of power? No, no, no sense no, of power. No, nothing. Nothing like that at all. No. Mm. So Same sense of looking over your shoulder, did anyone see it? That's about it. Mm. <laughs> mm. What do you expect me to say? Right. Mark Brandon Chopper Reed wasn't afraid of killing, and even in his final weeks, he wasn't afraid of dying. He died as he lived, with no remorse, few regrets, and certainly no guilt over the four murders he's now admitted to. He leaves behind a wife, Margaret, and two sons, Charlie and Roy. You got kids, okay? No, I never ever worried about death. Never ever entered my mind death. That's what's kept me alive, I suppose. They say you, uh, you you sleep and you sleep and you sleep and then you fall into a coma and then you uh, sometimes you're in the coma you die. So it sounds pretty painless, you know. So I hope that's how I go. 
It's better than dying in a, with a bullet in the back of the brain or a bullet in the front of the brain. <laughs> I guess you've dodged a few of those. Yeah, I've dodged, I've dodged a few of those and um, I literally have too. I've heard the bullets rustling through the, the air going past me ears. Mm, I've heard that too. Just living in Chicago. It's good to be able to hear the sound. If you don't, you're dead. Even though I've got no ears, I can still hear the sound of a bullet. What do you think your judgment day will bring? Do you think there's a big penitentiary up in the sky, big pentridge in the sky? Well, if there was a big pentridge in the sky, um, I suppose there'd be a place there for me. <laughs> I wonder who'd be in it. Chopper up there with Tupac chilling. Probably place would be empty, wouldn't it? Because it'd be in heaven. <laughs> I'd be the only person up there. <laughs> I would. I'm the only person I could think of going to heaven. Really? Yeah. From my world. <laughs> That's it. All right, man. Tell we have contacted comment. Victorian police and offered any material that might help them Girl, to clo- shut your tricking ass up. See, Renee would never, and I knew it. I knew you was tricking. Renee would never. See, they they can watch the show and get the material, man. Renee is a gangster. You are not. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. YouTube, I do not condone this. I'm just saying. I'm gone.